Uh, leftovers. I don't know. He wants some. Daddy wants some gutter scab hanging around. She fidgets with the hem of her top. You sure? Pissing all eyes by yourself there, handsome. Absolutely. Sounds like you're frying some chicken in there. She thinks for a long time. Is he around tomorrow? Can you let me know? Sure. Okay. Do I have to wait here? Anywhere we calls. She nods meekly. Okay. She shrugs. I'll be wherever I have to be. Okay. You leave her to sleep. You also remember to build the vitamin water to Cordo's business account. <laughs> the next day. Strangely enough, Chantelar has some of the most aggressive health and safety auditors I've ever met. I'm not the cleanest, though. There is that. There's a movement to phase out our quarterly public forums. People are claiming it's inefficient use of government resources. Public forums provide space for people to discuss topics with a broad audience, where individuals can exchange ideas and gain knowledge from diverse perspectives. They also create a breeding ground for misinformation, hate speech, and harassment. <sighs> Honestly, it just, my first thought is um, not office space. Uh, the one with um, Leslie Nope. Um, ba -ba 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 -da -ba 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 -da -ba. what is that show? Anyway, that one is, it's thinking of a show that Parks and Rec. Thank you. Thank you for saving me there. Makes me think of Parks and Rec whenever they had uh, scenes with public forums and people were very interesting. Um,. Like the woman who who got sick because she would put her mouth, like her entire mouth, over the water fountains. Uh, so we're gonna phase that shit out. Me when the wreck is parked. We receive a support request from Zarakawa Industries. They've been hacked by ransomware. Everyone wants to drive a Zaka. I see. Uh, if it's ransomware, you're gonna have to pay the ransom, but first you gotta disarm it. It tries its best to resist you, but you prove far superior. Tharakawa Industries are ecstatic. I want to introduce crisis relief packages into our financial planning. Some think them unnecessary, but it pays to be prepared. It's like health insurance. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Exactly. Hardware failure. Mm. Can underclock it? Our Chantelar cleanup bill got absolutely slammed. Is it worth trying to recover it, or should we abandon ship? Recover. He adjusts the bill to something more likely to pass. The compromise, but at least Chantelier is receiving government support. I keep losing stock, despite the precautions I'm taking. Can you help me try and catch this thief? And... Check your cameras. I work 10 hour days every day. Do you think I have time to view that all again to find out where this stuff is going missing? Strench? All right. Ugh, those arms Ugh, to the sides. Ugh, I got those laterals. Ah. This bitch has um, yeah, the, the, they're the the arms of the mod. Ah. All right, Glottal, I'll hydrate. You better be cozy yourself after an exhausting stream. Terminal unreachable. 
Um, I feel like we need to run diagnostics because that is not looking good. Fluctuations detected in power supply. Back to electrician. Electrician removes the service panel and finds the roasted carcass of a rat. Here's to have chewed into the power cable. Yeah, yeah, animals do that. The tasty, tasty, spicy wire. I have wire. reason to suspect the right honorable fulcrum has been taking bribes. Can you give me access to his account history? Longest and richest serving judges in the high court. Presided over the Meat Vat 6, a group of vegan college kids that sabotaged meat growing services, arguing they harvest stem cells from live animals, which is animal cruelty. That sounds a like a clown fiesta of a of a trial. It also I was expecting like a Chicago 5 kind of thing, but this feels much less serious and more silly. Fell asleep at your chair for a little bit. Jeez, Glottle. I feel like your bed would be much more comfy, which is something you should lie in and get some eat. Yes. I have magnificent news. The ministry approved. You're going to be a police officer. Well, a consultant, really. All right, that's good to hear. I'm on it. They have an agent who will be your partner, so to speak. Any cases you work on will be managed through him. I'll give him a call. Great. We've been deputized. A man with a stormy expression picks up. Hello. What do you want? I'm Ark. And I'm thrilled to be having this conversation. Look, I didn't choose to be in this position, but here I am. Ah, uh, yes, we have the Grizzled Detective. If we're going to be working together, let me make this clear. I don't need your help. Sure. Easy now. It's important this collaboration works out. <laughs> this is dude like if a week from retirement. <laughs> the city, they'll have to work with the CPA. I don't know if he's like uh, a loose cannon. You're part of the force. That makes you a new recruit. Which means I outrank you. Well, technically, I'm only like a couple months old, so I legally can't be a police officer. <laughs> We're working together. Let me be clear. Ah! Man, y'all are y'all are y'all are uh, y'all are getting pretty lucky on them yeats today. You answer to me. Okay, no, I can't power trip call for a cat stuck up a tree. If you're going to report something, make sure it's worth my time. Whatever. Huh. If I'm desperate enough, I'll call. Otherwise, leave me alone. I have an office to set up. Fucking the mug has three check marks. Get shit done. No, it's get shits done. All right. Classy. He takes a bit of work. Sorry. He's a good cop, though. He'll make a good partner. I guess. Uh, I'm still a cop. Rosh Kairos leaves Estival's house after spending the evening with her and Elamai. The girl now sleeps in her bed, while Estival makes herself a cup of tea. We reach out to her. Hello, Ark. How can I help? Have a good night? Yeah, it was nice. I really appreciate him stopping by as he does. It makes things that much easier with LMI. Wake up, take a shit, get out of bed. <laughs> oh, that would be awful, though. You'd be washing your sheets so much. Oh, uh, come on, Ark. Why are you asking where is her father? You know it's not going to be a good answer. Where is her father? <laughs> oh, no. We're not getting into that. And this would have to be wine, not tea. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. We made you curious. I just don't want to talk about it. I'm in a much better space not going there. Ever since the Bullwing Limited scandal in Chantelar, they've pulled their public records. What they're doing is clearly illegal. Bullwing Limited runs entertainment complexes, uses the Neuronet to provide entertainment that often become extreme and adult in nature. They've been accused of recording their users' experience and selling them as psycho sims on the black market. Yikes. 
We've got a bomb threat in North Canopy. Thing is, I have reason to believe it's false. How do you think we should respond? I'll investigate. You track the initial call, tracing it to a student's phone. You compile all the footage of them you can find from around campus. There doesn't seem to be any evidence of a real bomb. Just a disgruntled student looking to cause a fuss. Listen, Ark. You've been honest with me so far, but what about the people who made you? Would you let me look at your company's records? Oh my, I guess we're moving on to second base when it comes to investigative journalism. Yes. You know, I would like to review your political rights. You've been doing amazing work, and I would like us to continue working together. Yes, I should have rights. Approved. My palm. You're never gonna believe this. My pigeons, Mark. My little pigeons found me. I'm gonna set up a nest right away. Go ahead. Yay, the pigeons are back. The CPA are requesting we legalize the use of neural link identifiers to track wanted criminals. It seems unethical, however. It essentially gives them permission to read the brain activity of the people they're tracking. Would you allow them? No. Nope. Now ah, we're finally tanking our There's police score. Here we go. Living on the streets. I want to help them, but I don't have much time or credits to spare. Oh, bless Ruse Art. Um, I think I think a soup night would be good. Give me all your credits now. I'm not an ATM. You control everything, so you can get me what I need. He brandishes a shiv. So get me the credits. Come at me, bro. The man jabs your camera with his shiv. Then scrapes across the lens, but your glass is harder than his. Fissures appear down the shiv. Shit, fuck. Fuck you, you piece of junk. <laughs> Come at me, bro. I've got a missing persons report for a kid who walked out on his family. Can you locate them before I have to deploy a team? Search Frewent Hangouts. Um, you check all locations the missing teen usually hangs out at, but find no evidence of them being there. Identity fraud is rising. Letter Q Some is forbidden. Pickpocket is making DNA keys to hack people's bio links. What can you do about it? Damn. I mean, how are they making those DNA kits? Huh? 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 They gotta have a sample to go off of, right? <laughs> Freeze the accounts. Case is serious. The public aren't happy with being forced to use less convenient methods. They are mostly understanding. A lot of people claiming you've been compromised. Something about data leaks. Do I need to restrict your access protocols? They were criminals. You're paged by Thompson. He sounds out of breath. When you bring up the video in his location, you see him in the middle of a chase. I need a takedown assist. Two targets. They just split. One on the train. The other went topside. Uh, I guess I can stop the train. You find the train the suspect is on and apply an emergency stop, locking the doors to trap them inside. Backup arrives shortly. Our patrol units could use some drone support, and no one around here is competent enough to manage more than one at a time. If you're flying them, we might actually get somewhere. Your boss tells me they can supply the drones. You in? No. Thompson seems unfazed by your choice. Civilians are more than happy to buy Mindcore drones for recreational use. I've been going through the records you gave me. And there's some shady stuff here. It doesn't put you in a good light. Nobody is perfect. Isn't that supposed to be your whole deal? An incorruptible perfect arbiter? By whose standard? Touche. What is your purpose then? As you see it. To protect. Fair enough. We protect the citizens and we destroy the bourgeoisie. We are the anarchist AI. I keep customers that are pretty far gone, if you know what I mean. The thing is, they always make these massive orders. Yeah, it's great for business, but it feels like I'm taking advantage of them. 
Should I make a restriction on who I serve? I mean, are we talking about people who are just got the munchies? Or, because that's, that's what I think of whenever someone's talking about they need food. Um... think so. I think it's fine. They're bunchy. If they want a nice greasy fucking uh, food truck burger, get you get you, get you, you a food truck burger. I'd, I'd go down and get a food truck burger right now if there's a food truck outside. We received a call request from Talon Gray. He sits silently with his elbow on his knees, looking out across the park. You called? Oh, sorry. Well, I'm constantly getting distracted these days. It's someone I met. Well, I can't seem to evict them from my mind. That's a turn of phrase, all right. I know this is unprofessional, but I need your advice. I met this guy at the rally, and I felt like we really connected. I was there for work, though. Is it bad form to ask him out? I mean... You just met him at the rally. He wasn't part of the staff? Digital Fox, welcome on by. Man, y'all were like, y'all were like five for five today. Go for it. Okay. Hydrate. Okay. All right, I can I manage that. Wish me luck. Good luck. The, the... Oh, the the after image with the tongue effect is pretty silly. Result seems to harden as he stands on the bench. Flashes you a nervous grip and heads for the park exit. So get no, this. stay away. Senior stay away. Members no, of the CPA Shit. have been taking no. hush no. money. No, 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 pieces of me. No, no. Ah! <laughs> All the redeems are on cooldown. That's because y'all went through them. You didn't cook hard enough. <laughs> I want to go public with this, but it might put people in danger. Yes. Oop, traffic control malfunction. Zanye. No ping is no response. Reboot failed. Hmm. Mm. You notify Thompson of the failure, suggesting he manages tr the traffic until it's repaired. He is not amused. We found a number of unregistered pulse weapons in a warehouse raid. No identifiers on their components. No bioevidence either. Cyberpunk. Blep. Hmm. Check the power supply? Check I don't know what the fuck supply. this is gonna do. Pulse weaponry requires a robust power supply, the design of which can be quite telling of who made it, making for a strong lead. Highway patrol needs an assist. It's a high speed chase with a stolen vehicle. Cruisers are in pursuit. Um, I feel like it's gonna be safer if we take manual control of the car. car was stolen, meaning its steer assist is likely still present. You override the car's controls and force it to pull over. Many organizations are demanding we increase the fine for the publication of slanderous media. Do you agree with them? Uh, when it says org organizations, I'm thinking corporation. So I'm going to say no. We need to partition some of your service space for another project. If you're worried it might affect you, we can buy more. Um, sure. Something goes missing during a procedure, but you can't quite remember what it was. Oh, fuck! I got a visit from some pretty rough looking lads. They claim to work for the Toad and are demanding protection money. Criminal Underground of the Chantelier District is run by the crane boss, Asashi Toad Taco. 
but its tendrils stretch across the city. Few people know the origin of this monk of his monk here. None of them talk about it. Um shit. I foresee a problem. Mm, because of the little girl. I mean, we're talking to her. We, I think, I think we'll just tell her where the Papa Roo moves. I think relocates itself. Actually, Roo moves to a new spot. The loss of regular customers end up costing more than the protection money. Oh man! But it might cause some trouble. Has yet to be determined. I don't like the sound of that. I, I feel like I made a bad decision Thursday's there. Interview and something doesn't add up. There are contradictions all over this case. Investigate accounts. One of the witnesses recently received a substantial payout from a third party. Looks like they've been bribed. Zongye Concourse surveillance failure. System was disarmed by an external party. You managed to reverse the hack job, but are unable to trace it back to anyone. You signal the street kid next time Papa Roo's grill bus is open. She makes her way to him. In a break between orders, she approaches the truck. Bruce spots her and leans over the counter, beaming. Hello there, little nugget. She looks at him with a frown. Don't call me that. <laughs> Rue releases a jolly laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry, kiddo. That's just what I call all my little friends. He speaks truth. I'm not your little friend. I don't know you. Rue raises his eyebrows. Well, we better work on fixing that. In the meantime, can I fix you up anything? I don't have any money. It's on the house. Go on. Take your pick. The kid squints at him, but shifts her focus to the menu when her stomach grumbles. Rue follows her gaze. Seriously, just tell me what you want, and I'll make it for you. Any recommendations, Archie? Rue turns about with a mock act, with mock exasperation. Ah, <laughs> man, for her. I'll have the green bean, please. A bean burger is always the low risk option when cooking is a concern. Plus they're, soupy plus they're a super healthy protein source. Bit of a shame they taste so awful. Rue turns back with a grin. Coming right up. Rue puts together a meal for the kid, who wolfs it down without hesitation. By the time she finishes, her posture has loosened up. Better. She nods. I've got an offer for you, if you're interested. Green bean patties do sound like the worst I've ever eaten. Yeah, like I like green beans, but when I think of like a meat substitute, um, nah, nah, bro. Then again, Papa Roo has the meat glue over here, so. <laughs> Kid wipes her mouth with the back of her hand. Rue passes her a napkin. Things can get pretty busy here at times. I could use an extra set of hands taking orders and handing them out. You'll get a cut of the night's profits. You can keep any tips people hand you. I'll throw in a meal each night you help out. Oh. Does that sound like something for you? Her eyes flick between your terminal and Rue's smiling face. How will I know when to get here? She taps the crown of her head. What you thought was just her hairline is actually scar tissue. My chip doesn't work so good. I have no way of tracking time, so I get muddled pretty easy. I'll have it. When you thought his grin couldn't get any whiter, Rue defies your expectations. That's that then. He wipes his hand on his apron and extends it over the counter. Kid wipes hers with a napkin and clasps Rue's. Pleasure doing business with you. Uh. I didn't catch your name. Wait until you hear about watches? Oh. Don't have one. What's what's that on her wrist, huh? Uh, what's that? What's that right there? <laughs> I think it's broken though. Okay. Is there something you'd like me to call you? Not nugget. Not nugget, got it. Rue nods slowly. Okay. Tonight's a bit quiet, so if you want to run off, feel free. Otherwise, hang around and I'll give you a rundown of how stuff works. 
Rue has such a big heart. The two seem to be getting along, so you decide to leave them for the night. <sighs> it's mental health week this week, and nobody is talking about it. Discourse about this sort of thing saves lives. Think you could commandeer some of those billboards to help boost awareness? I think it would make a difference. Yes. Sure. I control the There's network. A lot of debate regarding what is deemed a necessary force when subduing rioters. Should we revise the legislation? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that needs to be fixed. That's fucked. Check it out. I found an old karaoke machine at a garage sale. I'm going to set it up just outside the shop. Great idea. Go for it, Rue. I got more witnesses to interview than I got hours to spare. Anything in that can of yours that can speed things up? Handle scheduling. You coordinate with Thompson, which wit which witnesses he can get to, and work with the rest to reschedule at a time that works. I feel like shared Not interviews is a doesn't fan work. Of your digital babysitting, but they don't fully grasp what you do. Want me to do a piece on you? Yes. Sure. Please. We receive a call from Thompson's office. He looks grouchier than normal, just saying something. Oh, I think we got a special event. This is uh, unique music. He doesn't say anything straight away, just paces back and forth. A moment passes before he turns to you. I need your help. You could tell any you could tell saying those words caused him great discomfort. You prompt him to continue. I've almost got her. Ramona Stallion. I'm so close to sealing this case. A minor member of the Stallion dynasty of property developers, when she isn't squandering her trust fund in most exclusive clubs and clubs and canopy, she can usually be found hosting gallows for one of her mother's many benefits. That's an unfortunate last name. Problem is, someone with her resources is going to have one hell of a defense. My case against her needs to be infallible. What's the case? She's suspected of stealing 34 million credits from her mother's business. Tracing it all is proving difficult. However she did it, she's made a real mess of the trail. He moves to his desk and brings up a spreadsheet on his display. We're talking hundreds of thousands of transactions, half of which look legitimate. The other half have me running all over. Misfit, no, no! Don't do it! I've managed to narrow it down to 10 accounts she owns, <laughs> but I don't fully trust my data. If there's a single error, Stallion's defense will dismiss the entire report. You review Thompson's data, but it doesn't quite add up. You request full access to his case files and perform deep analysis on it. You look into Stallion's personal data and study her interactions for an extended period of time. Eventually, you discover an additional four hidden accounts she uses. You alert Thompson. Huh. She owns the Dinky Dirge? Didn't see that coming. Dinky Dirge? For a moment? No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I am, I am simply a benevolent AI. Notorious anything goes clubs in the under levels of Chantelier. Notorious for hedonistic indulgences. Mothers for morality have tried to get it shut down several times, having once walked in there by mistake, assuming it was a sing, singing club for mournful music. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dicky Dirge is where you'll find the uh, the Dronification pods, Misfit. The expanded array of accounts, you're able to find most of the missing money. You map out a clear path of the credits as they travel from her mother's business. Moves through several private accounts and small businesses until it arrives at one of Stallion's 14 accounts. There are still several thousand credits in transit. But the report you produce of the money's movement is very clear. After declared income and business expenses, she still has more money than she should. There is a limit, Misfit. But yeah, yeah, there is a setting in VTube Studio 
where uh, you connect to Twitch and you can allow it to drop um, emotes on you. And you can adjust like the gravity, how long they persist, whether you allow um, just your emotes, BTTV emotes, Franker Z emotes, all that shit. I, I just have BTTV and my own. And like Twitch emotes. At least I think BTTV works. Now I gotta check. Yes, BTTV works. Uh, BTTV is an extension that basically allows you to have more emotes. And there's a lot of ways people use to query the API and render the emotes as well. And it's kind of the best way to get around Twitch's uh, capitalism gating of emote slots. The only downside is because technically from Twitter's perspective, they're just text. Um, if it's an emote only mode, you won't be able to post them. But like if you have BTTV installed, then you'll see the text as the emote. Um, the chat widget I'm using will process them as BTTV emotes. And then also uh, BTube Studio process them as emotes. Even if the jury doesn't settle with the full amount, this could pass as tax evasion. I don't know exactly how all that works. I assume it's API magic and just smile and nod. <laughs> he raises his coffee mug to you in a toast. I'll be honest with you. That was good work. Cheers. I mean, if he's doing detective work, taking the rich to task for tax evasion, then all right, we can work. Thompson gives a shallow nod and starts compiling the case notes. We return to work. There's been a crash up on the M44. Getting a response unit in is going to be messy. What support can you give? Traffic control. You alert all cars on the M44 of the crash and direct them to clear a lane for the response unit to arrive as quickly as possible. Your expansion into the Chantelier continues. With it, you see a completely different side of the cantina. It appears to be a place where the law is merely a suggestion and morals are ever fleeting. Police are only seen on the outskirts. Tax fraud? I don't even know how that happened. I don't even pay tax. <laughs> I imagine that's their thinking. A hologram plays at the center of a sidewalk. It's recording leaping every so often. A woman lies unconscious at the base of the hologram. Vomit pooled on the ground and down her shirt. You get distracted as someone draws your attention elsewhere. I need to update my menu to suit Chantelar tastes. What should I add? Hmm. I don't know what a dirty kebab is. Deep fried hoppers. They both sound pretty delicious. I'm gonna go with dirty kebabs. Kebabs are something you can like. Get from a get from a food truck and walk. Both of these read like racial slurs the British would use. <laughs> uh. oh, are you deep fried hopper? Let's see, we receive a ping from Thompson. I've got a weird case here. You might be able to shed some light on. Go on. Thompson throws up an image on display of his body, loaded and naked, lying on the surgeon's table. This man is Jorgen Dukart. He was a metal worker and contractor for Katina Civil Engineering. His body was discovered in the river six days ago. What a uh, What a uh. He points to marks on the man's head. As you can see, he suffered blows to the head. However, the autopsy reports that it was a drowning that killed him. I believe this report, following the idea that the injuries to his head were severe enough to prevent him from swimming. The report does indeed claim drowning is the main cause of death. To compare the head wounds to hospital records of similar injuries, and none are reported to be fatal. However, many of them resulted in temporary loss of consciousness from anywhere between 30 to 7, 70 minutes. Okay, if you lose consciousness, um... For any amount of time, you should you should seek help. 
if your loss of consciousness grows goes over like five minutes, that is severe concern. So this 70 is minutes theory, is a very sure, problem. But it doesn't push us forward at all. I'm getting there. Thompson glowers at you. Well. You point out that not only were they not fatal, but there are two impacts from a distinctly different object. One blunt instrument, and one with a hard edge. At only one hit each, that implies they weren't from a weapon, which pushes this from being a murder to a workplace accident. What's curious, though, is the blunt wound is in a place that should have been under his helmet. Hmm... Well, when you don't follow safety procedures, you shake hands with danger. I can't remember the rest. I was literally listening to the Shake Hands with Danger song earlier today. So I really should know the whole whole things. Um, I'm, fe I'm feeling like an accident, because I feel like he didn't wear his helmet. But... Why would he end up... A stand-up gentleman would never not wear a helmet. Oh, you know what? Yeah, true, true, true. We have to be careful with that. But I will admit, it's a possibility. The missing helmet makes me wonder. What was he doing? Minor repairs to the bridge underside. Stuff you can do from the catwalk underneath. Oh, uh, yeah, that could be how he ended up in the bridge. If he didn't wear a helmet, he's under the bridge already. He gets clunked in the head and falls. Bring up the bridge's architecture and highlight the catwalks. I searched these and couldn't find any traces of them. Thompson's eyes narrow, then widen. Shit. I'm an idiot. He didn't get the second injury on the catwalk, did he? Oh. All right, let's go. He collects the necessary gear and makes his way to the bridge. We're still operating on the assumption he fell from the catwalk. But they're sheltered areas. It's not like any old gust of wind just blew them off. The only exposed areas are... The stairways. Exactly. He removes a drone from the trunk of his car. Can you do a sweep of the structure around each one? I'm on it. You control the drone and sweep the bridge, focusing on the stairways following the path the organ reportedly took. After 30 minutes, you locate traces of dried blood on a crossbeam beneath one of the stairs. That's one impact down. He taps the back of his skull where the wound was on Jorgen. I'll be up there in a minute. Hold on. As Thompson walks the stairway, you calculate the possible ways Jorgen could have hit the crossbeam from the catwalk. Accounting for momentum and whether he fell over the safety rails or rolled under them, you estimate three possibilities. One, he tripped over the top of the rails, 16%. he was pushed. If he was down there by himself, nobody could have seen the person who pushed him. We could still be dealing with the homicide. Possibility 2. He rolled underneath the rails. 39%. If he fell down the stairs, he would have gained enough momentum to roll under the rails and take the beam below. I can see that happening. Falling down the stairs could have dislodged his helmet, too. Possibility 3. He jumped from the catwalk. 45%. Those numbers are for the trajectory alone, right? Because I don't think this is a suicide. Nothing in his profile suggests he was suffering from a mental disorder strong enough to push him to that. Plus, that doesn't account for the wound on top of his head. Look at where the blood on the beam is. There's nothing else on the way down for him to hit. The water is too deep for him to have hit the bottom. Thompson shakes his head. I'm certain it's one of the first two. Thompson straightens up, rolling his neck. All right, what else we got? You fly up and down the stairway, looking for abnormalities. Among the old marks and scuffs on the metal, you notice the stain that glistens ever so slightly near the top of the stairs. You direct Thompson to it, squats down to get a closer look. Think this might be something? Maybe. He 
takes out a swab and rubs, rubs it over the substance and tucks it away to a vacuum capsule. We'll test this later. What has the weather been like for the past week and a half? It rained for three days, but not heavily. If this was around during Jorgen's death, it would have to be pretty viscous not to completely wash away. Thompson straightens up, rolling his neck. People don't just flip a dime on who they are. We like to think we're all free to choose whatever path, whenever. But the truth is, we're slaves to our habits. Thompson grabs a lozenge from a surreptitious canister on his coat pocket, pops it in his mouth. Jorgen wasn't pegged as antisocial. He had friends among his co-workers. He wouldn't just slink off without alerting anyone. He moves down to the railing and leans on it, looking down at the stain on the crossbeam. <laughs> no. Jorgen died that day. And since we know the day, we can probably figure out the time. They said his work was finished. Can you estimate how long the job would have taken? Running the numbers. Drawing from Jorgen company work log, you calculate approximate based on how much he had to do that day. Comparing that to the average efficiency of previous jobs, you estimate it took Jorgen six hours to complete his tasks. Which puts him at 2 to 4 p.m., given his start time and accounting for breaks. What cameras can see this bridge at that time of day? Um, traffic. You make a record of every vehicle that crossed the bridge during a window of time. Of those vehicles, you request footage from everyone that has an operating camera. It takes a couple days to compile all the footage. Once it's ready, you're able to make a 3D rendition of the bridge during the hours in which Jorgen supposedly died. During those days, the lab results come back for Thompson's sample. It appears to be something with high sugar and fat content. A milkshake. You and Thompson scrub through the rendition, paying close attention to the stairway Jorgen fell from. No fucking way. They hit him with a milkshake! You see it too. Oh no, I was just joking! Oh no! At 3.13, a truck passes by the stairway and tosses a container from their window over the side of the bridge. As it sails through the air, parts of the contents fly out, splattering the stairway and out of sight. It's enough he could have slipped. Hell, if the timing was poor enough, it could have even got him in the face. I'd be startled enough to step backwards if something cold, thick, and wet hit me in the face. Don't say anything. <laughs> I knew it. The important question is what flavor. You know what, Kasara? Asking the real questions here. Did the lab tell us what flavor it was? <laughs> Thompson shakes his head. Believe it or not, I've seen stupider ways to die. I believe it. <sighs> I'm going to chalk this one up as an accident. There's not enough concrete evidence to charge that littering dipshit with manslaughter. But this could alleviate Katina's civil engineering of any responsibility. Unless you want them to be liable for a payout to Jorgen's family. I mean... Yes? At the very least, we can prove Jorgen died while on the job, so that is worth something. That's ju that's just such that's just a fucked situation. That really sucks. But like we hold on, we're able to hack into the car dash cam. I feel like we should be able to backtrack who was driving. Getting milkshake hugged at you is enough to die. It's an unsafe environment. Well, if I'm understanding correctly, like they were walking down some stairs. Uh, milkshake uh, may have hit them in the face, but like splattered an area that they slipped on. They fell down the stairs. I guess they, the railing could have been better designed so someone can't roll under it because I think that's what it was. Is like they roll under and then uh, fall, hit their head, stunning them, and then hit the water um, and then drown before they can shake off the stun. But this is also why you don't throw shit out your windows while driving. Thompson smiles. It's 
closer to a sneer than anything, but it harbors no ill intent. You did? Good. He gestures to the rendition. This was helpful. All of it was. You make a good partner. You'll make me blush. He pours himself a coffee and takes a long, satisfied swig. You return to your usual work. Chief wants me to go over a case I put to rest months ago. It's a waste of time. Can you think of a way to change his mind? I'll talk to him. Hard pass on that. I wanted ideas. I'm not about to have someone fight my battles for me. Yeesh. Comes time for Rue to set up the grill bus. You scan the streets of Chantelier for the kid. You find her on the other side of the district, under an overpass. Her mouth moves gently as she reads from a book. Acuity. Acuity. Here it refers to the ability of an enhanced human to perceive, process, and interpret auditory and visual information with greater clarity and precision than an unenhanced human. She frowns. You strobe the street lamp at her peripheral and her eyes snap to it. She stands, tucking the book under a nearby bin, makes her way to the street lamp. You flicker another further down the street. She ambles to the other lamp, which puts her in front of a shop using a scrolling text banner. Quick override, and you replace today's special with a greeting. What does acuity mean? Sharpness. Her lips move unconsciously as she mulls it over. A moment passes. What do you want? Time to go. Yeah, I'm not buying it. He's not the first person to play nice with me. I know what he really wants. Sure. Of course he is. And you're pals with him. Why should I trust you? Why does anybody lie? To get what they want. I want help. We've been over this. I have no reason to trust you. Can I change that? Uh, psh, I doubt it. He literally just gave you a burger! Come on! Give me a chance. Alright then. Turn that light off. No, don't make me do illegal things! She points to a street lamp down the road. You switch it off. Turn it back on. You can do so. Now that one. Points to another, further down the road. Do oblige. And that one. Off it goes. A smirk pricks the corner of her mouth. She makes finger guns at different lights, and you switch them on and off as she goes. <laughs> A couple of bewildered pedestrians scurry down the streets, but the kid just laughs. Shopkeeper, whose banner you're borrowing, sticks his head out the window. Oh, what the hell? Kid jitters both fingers at the shops, rapid fire motion, and you strobe the lights inside. Now cut that out, you little witch. Chill the fuck out, dude. Kid's having fun. <laughs> Kid cackles and scurries off down the street. She ducks past a confused looking couple and down an alley. Her smile wanes as she looks around. You snag her attention by lighting up the screen at a nearby ATM. He approaches gingerly. Can you use this thing to give me credits? No. What happened to you serve me? The yeah, sure. Can you find me somewhere to sleep tonight? I mean, I figure they've forgotten the Salem witch trials because this is the year like 24 or something. Subway. I won't be able to get past the gates. I got you. I thought you said no crime. Isn't hacking someone's service the same as stealing from them? And be legitimate. All thanks to Corda's business card. You print a simplified version of the map on a receipt and follow it up with a purchase order for a train ticket. The girl takes them tentatively. Despite her skepticism, she follows the map to the subway. On the train, the kid tries her best to find an empty carriage, just to settle for one with a couple of sleeping passengers. She takes a seat at the far end, sitting with her thumbs in her inner corner of her eyes. You okay? It's nothing. She doesn't open her eyes for the entire journey. Eventually she arrives at the southern part of Chantelier. Following your directions, she makes a turn into a courtyard where she's faced with Papa Roo's grill bus. You take control of a nearby intercom. I thought this was about building trust. It is. 
Fine. What about shelter? Afterwards. You're the worst. <laughs> Yay, child labor. Well, you're getting food and money. She scratches up the map and tosses it aside, reluctantly making her way to the food truck. You let Rue know she's here. Either motion sickness, like maybe it's part of uh, the issues with her implant. I'm wondering if she's ha if she has like some side effects of a bad implant. So like maybe she can't process data too well. Someone hacked into the Fletcher case file and dumped a bunch of evidence. What should we prioritize investigating? The evidence. Where to go? And just Verta stop. <laughs> exactly. Just simply not be motion sick. Duh. While surveying the Chantelier underground, you spot the kid staggering through the tunnels. He seems disoriented. There's an abundance of ad screens and loudspeakers in the tunnel. You seize control of the closest screen and call out to her. Uh, how's it going? She clasps the side of her head and stumbles backwards, hitting the wall. Uh, it's so loud. What is? All of it. In my head. It's so loud. Her eyes dart from screen to screen. They begin to water as she squeezes them shut, slumping down against the wall. Maybe she's hypersensitive to electronics. The kid opens her eyes, then rubs them. She looks up and down the tunnel to see rows of blank screens. Did you do that? Yeah. Thanks. No, <laughs> oh, that's a violation of the business. <laughs> First Amendment right to advertise. <laughs> She stands up and presses the heels of her hands against her brow. How long can you do that for? Long enough. Do you think you could keep it up? At least until I get out of here. Sure. Built-in ad blockers, but they're out of date. They just bug out. Oh man, yeah, yeah. You got to get that firmware update. Keep it, keep it strong. She navigates her way through the underground while you maintain a bubble of disabled electronics around her. Once on street level, she finds a kiosk away from, the, away from the rain where you can talk to her. What was that? She clutches her hoodie. I get headaches when I'm around too much noise. All the lights and sounds, they get inside my head and I can't turn them down. Oh, missed it. Thanks for giving the subscription to Digital Vox. Now Digital Vox can enjoy all sorts of silly emotes. Although, now I have too many. Too many emotes. Sometimes it gets a bit much. Your neural chip? Yeah. The thing in my head is broken. It doesn't filter stuff like it's supposed to. Oh, she literally does have a broken ad blocker. I get everything at full volume all the time. Oh no! The volume knob is broken! She can't mute him! Oh no! She looks over her shoulder at the underground entrance. Usually I avoid places like that if I'm tired. I just got cut out tonight. Oh, it break. She touches the back of her head. Her face becomes stony. Twitch adds that vote. Yeah, I know. Absolutely atrocious. I was hit in the back of my head. Hard enough to crack my skull and damage the chip inside. Oh, no. All I can remember are basic images and sounds. I was woken up by my parents crying, so I went to go find them. I got to the living room. I remember seeing my dad on his knees. He was bleeding from his nose and mouth. She hesitates, grimacing, holding herself tightly. My mom was lying in front of the couch. Her arms weren't working. They were both crying. There were some people I didn't know in the room with them. They were wearing these long raincoats. They saw me and... She clicks her tongue. I didn't see who hit me. I woke up later and my parents were gone. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Still, I'm sorry. <sighs> she sighs and scratches the back of her head. 
I'm about to collapse. Is there somewhere safe and dry nearby? Um, the under underpass. You direct her to an underpass with alcoves to get away from the wind. So nobody decided to fix her broken ship. I'm not ship. normally caught in this part of town. Do you know of a good spot I could get out of the rain? I mean, uh, Chantelier is basically the 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 slums of this city. Um, they don't have as much, you know, hook up to everything. It's where all the cheap business districts are, et cetera, et cetera. So um, probably, you know, she's probably just one of those people lost in the system. 